Good morning traders, this is Tony D from Easy Markets here in Sydney, another episode of Trader Talk. We've got uh, a key uh, CPI number coming up here for the Australian dollar. Uh, make or break time here for the Aussie. You can see down we're, we're down at 77.75 and if you're looking at support, 77.50s are monster. Yes, uh, last year you can see it bounced off it oh, six or seven times. Uh, it's already uh, broken through it during an uh, earlier part of this year, but come back down to test it once. This is the second test now. So previous very strong resistance does become strong support. Underneath this support though, we've also got another technical support coming up, which is a 200 day moving average around about 77.05. Uh, so keep that in the back of your mind as well. If we do break 77.50 on a weaker than expected CPI number today, uh, then you will see the um, 200 day moving average come into, into play. Uh, historically and just gen broadly speaking, traders uh, like to use a 200 day moving average as the trend. So if we break the 200 day moving average, then it's much easier to make the case that we are in a downtrend now and on of uh, a bigger scale. So that opens up the door to 75, 73 uh, in coming weeks if the US dollar strength was to ratchet up and the Aussie dollar continues to underperform. Uh, the euro has been very stubborn. Uh, it's uh, just hanging around hasn't really made its mind up about which way it wants to go pre-ECB. Perhaps we are going to have to continue to range trade into this ECB announcement, unless rumors are leaked about which way they've decided one way or the other. Uh, the big you know, sort of next 200 pip move is, is probably going to be predicated on how aggressive they are at the taper meeting and what sort of uh, timeline they're looking for uh, in, in the future to um, to finish their taper basically. So the you know, the markets can start to price in when eventually the uh, ECB will be raising rates or not. The other big move in the market yesterday was the Kiwi dollar. Now, what's going on here? I uh, tested 70 early uh, in, in the Asian session, and then it was crunched lower later in the afternoon as uh, uh, the new prime minister said a couple of things which really spooked um, the international investor. One is that they're looking to reform and review the Reserve Bank Charter. Okay, so basically, central bank independence is being threatened here. They're looking to change what the central bank is targeting rather than just inflation, target inflation and uh, job stability. Um, now, jobs, you know, that's a much harder, broader theme to, to sort of manage and could lead to multiple scenarios where, you know, RBA, RBNZ remains lower for longer. So this opens up the door for a, a quite a large reaction there from international investors because if you uh, have lower interest rates for longer or just more uncertainty about their, when they're going to raise ever, then it's much easier just if you're going to pick a pair to sell, sell the Kiwi. And well, for whatever pair you're buying, if it's buying the pound, buying the euro, buying the Aussie in particular as well, Aussie Kiwi is looking very strong. All right, so the Kiwi dollar has some medium term downside just on the back of that alone right now. Um, also combined with the US dollar strength uh, yesterday as well. Uh, it's looking pretty sick here. It's got some key support at 68.60. A break of that will open up a much larger move. If you're looking on the weekly, we don't have much support to down uh, towards 65. Uh, then uh, finally, if you're looking um, at other key uh, res or key releases coming out today, you do have uh, for the UK session, you've got the GDP number. Now this GDP number is the last big number before the November 2nd Bank of England meeting. Okay, so if the market is going to price out the uh, Bank of England raising, because at the moment it's at 80% that the Bank of England is going to raise in uh, two weeks' time, then you know this number has to be terrible. Now the forecast is pretty low already, 0 0.3, and um, you know you can see some variance around that number because it is so low. Uh, if we if it is more negative than that, then yeah, the pound has uh, the ability here to to break lower towards that 130. If it's decent, if it's strong. And then the market's quickly at some point going to be focusing on the Bank of England. At the moment, it's not really talked about too much in the reason to buy or sell the the, uh, the pound. But as we get closer, it will, you know, especially post ECB, uh, it is going to become the, a big thing that the market's going to be focused on. It'll be the next big event in the market. So uh, it could lead itself to some support. And if you get some good Brexit news, then the uh, recent pound weakness, which is basically every day you don't get a deal from the Brexit negotiations, it just adds more pressure to selling. Uh, but with that Bank of England coming up, that's some good news. And if you get a little bit of positivity out of the Briggs negotiations, the chances of that pound reversing is very real. All right, so just be careful here on the shorts. The shorts is a short-term game. All right, guys, uh, just cutting through the noise for you today. If you do have any questions, come through to the dealing room. If you're not a member, join using the links below.